In this video, we're going to be doing some suspension work on this Arctic Cat snowmobile. So sit back and we'll show you what we're up to. Well, riding season is here upon us in Wisconsin, so it's time to get my old uh, reliable here up to snuff to get it ready for the trails. So what I've got here is a 2002 Articat ZR800 Cross Country Edition. Okay, so I went ahead a couple years ago and I extended the track to 136 from 121. So now I utilized a uh, Trax USA extension kit out of the companies out of Minnesota. But it gives you the rail extensions, it gives you a tunnel extension, and it gives you a 136 track. And you get your you get your pick of what you want, but I selected a ripsaw two one and a quarter inch track. Um, so I've been running this rig this way for about three years, and I've loved it so far. Um, I also went ahead and I put a Boss seat on there. That company I don't believe is in business anymore. It didn't survive the COVID situation, but um, took your butt height and rose it from here to about here, about four inches at least, and then um, it allows you to be more rider forward like some of the newer sleds. So it's just made a world of difference on the sled. It's, it doesn't even ride the same. I have the the same chassis over here in this old 440 where you can you know see the difference in the in the ride height there. So big difference for a guy like me. I'm you know six foot tall, longer legs, so uh, made a huge difference. So anyways. Um, time to get this guy into shape. So uh, yesterday I spent the day, uh, part of the day, going through and greasing all the zerks up and everything. And as I was down here, just kind of poking around on the track, curl down here, I noticed that bogey wheel and the one on the other side are extremely schlappy. So that means it's time for some new bearings on those. So here's the the axle that runs through those bogey wheels, um, set up with my torsion springs there. So. You can probably get to it and get it done without uh, taking the track off, but I feel it's been three years, I haven't had the track down. It's about time to go down, take that track out and have a good look at it. So what I'm gonna do here is show you how to pull the track and we'll uh, go ahead and change those uh, bogey wheel bearings out. Um, and we'll go through and look at the rest of the system down here just to see how my uh, how my extensions are holding up, You know, make sure there's no Loose nuts and bolts, make sure there's no anything else broken on there. So um, first thing you got to do, so this sled is equipped with a dial adjust front shock on here, not to be confused with the clicker shock. So what that does, um, many of the Articat fans will be familiar, but depending on the trail conditions, you can turn this dial and it'll raise up the front of the track or lower the front of the track, depending if you want more ski pressure or whatever, if you're in loose snow versus hard packed snow. So um there's a line that runs down through the body here and to the track so what you got to do is flip up the hood here and down inside you can kind of see down there there's a quick connect so i went ahead and already i pulled that free but um this portion here needs to run back out through a hole in the side of the chassis there in order for it to not get hung up in order to take that track out. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that through and then I'm going to get you guys set up on the uh, tripod and show you what I'm going to do to lift this sucker up. So stay with me. So before we get to that, I'm going to actually show you my uh, apparatus here. So um, what I have here is a uh, Unistrut track running the entire length of my shop. And I've got a uh, Harbor Freight winch mounted on there in uh, with um, some... Uh, with a trolley in there. So this winch, just by grabbing a hold here, can run the length of the shop. So you see that works pretty easy. So I actually have a uh, earlier video I made of that this year. Um, I'm gonna put the link up here so you can take a look at that if you want to, but uh, that's what I'm gonna use here to uh, lift her up. So it works real handy depending on what you're working on in the shop, just to be able to move it from one end to the other. Um, it, it works nice too because um, I have another video that I'll put up here, whoop, right there, where I, had, I was working on a tractor this year and I was able to take the uh, small engine off the tractor, lift it up, and then bring it away from the tractor and then set it down on a pallet just by utilizing the lift and that trolley system. So um, yeah, that works pretty slick. So I'm going to use it today for working on the sled. So I'll get you set up and show you how that works. 
All right, well, we'll show you how this all works here. So like I said, the trolley is kind of wheeled back and forth to get where you want it to be. You do want to make sure the sled is centered this way under here, but um, got it plugged in, we'll lower it down. Got my little sling here, just put it around either side of the uh, back end here. Hook it back on. And up we go. This is a list of pretty effortlessly. You can go up just about as high as you want. I'm just you know doing that for effect. But if you want to really get under there and work on something, um, you know if you pull the whole track down, that'd be the way to do it. So I'm going to lower it back down just to. I'm raising it up and up just to get the tension off of all the nuts and bolts. So now I'll grab you and I'll show you up close what we have to do to get that track out of there. All right, you can see here, um, these are my adjusters for the back wheels that gives us a track tension. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark what position those are in just so I know about where I was to begin with. And then I'm going to back them out all the way. And then I'm going to be able to slide or tap my, um, my back axle in to take all the tension off of that track. So that's going to be my first step here. Um, I'm going to have to do the same thing on both sides, so I'll go ahead and uh, grab a wrench and I'll show you how to do it. Alright, so what you're going to need is a 9 16 open end wrench and a 9 16 inch socket. So first thing, here's our, our um, lock nut, so we're going to go ahead and loosen that up, righty tighty lefty loosey, so let's go down here, get a good bite, pop that loose, okay, now we can go ahead and take our socket. And we can back this guy out as far as she'll go. Whoop. A little hard to work with one hand, but here's what we're gonna do. And so anyways, you keep working that out until you get it all the way, all the way free. Go ahead and do it on the other side, then I'll show you how we tap in the wheels there. So just uh, give me a moment. All right, I got both sides of the loose as loose as they can go, back all the way up. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a long screwdriver, go in bet between the webbing of the track, run of the axle, and take my dead blow and tap. Go tap, 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 both sides. Now, I have seen guys go ahead and just whack right on here with a dead blow, but your other bo your bogey's right there, and it's just plastic. So I'm always afraid I'm gonna wreck that bogey wheel. So I'm gonna put it right on that axle. Just give her a couple taps each side. You want to do it e alternate sides just to make sure it's going back in evenly, otherwise it's going to cock up one side or the other. There we go, we're getting some movement. See how close we're getting there. We are actually almost there. We got about one or two taps on each side. There, looks like we're all the way up. Okay, so now we have all the tension relieved off that track. So now I'll show you what that looks like, and I'll show you what the next step is. One second. As you can see here, the, the track is real saggy compared to what it was before. Um, I don't know if you can see that in the camera there, but you can look in there. You can see that black portion kind of in the middle right there. And there's a slot behind it. So you can see that all the gap in the slot there, that means the track is all the way forward. So we'll do the opposite when we are, well actually when we're tensioning it, we're going to use the, the bolt there to tension everything back up. But um, that's how that is. So next step, um, we have four bolts to take out. One, two, and two on the other side. And then once you do that, the track will drop right out. So I'm going to go ahead and take out both the back ones. And then um, it should pivot down. I'll go ahead and take out both the front ones, and I'm gonna I'm gonna ease them out. So loosen that one so it's almost all the way out, and then loosen the other one to get it out, and then um, we'll take out the other one. So actually, I think what I'm gonna do too is lower the uh, lower the winch down so that it doesn't just drop on me. That way, there's a little bit of weight on there, um, and it's all the way down to the ground. So I'll go ahead and lower that down, and I will um, pop out the first two, show you that it's loose, and then I'll work on the other two. So stick with me, please. 
So here's something really cool about using this lift. So um, as I was unbolting this, I noticed that the bolt was starting to, to go on an angle, so it was starting to bind a little bit. So that means I had the track down too low. So now I can just take my, uh, my winch and go up a hair. And now the bolts are lined up straight. So this is gonna come in real handy for when I'm putting this all back together because um, you have to have those holes just perfect, you know, up, down, left, right. So I can use the winch um, to go back and forth, up and down to make sure I get those holes aligned just right. So uh, just something cool I discovered as I was going through this. So I'll go ahead and finish taking that one out and then I'll show you where we're at. All right, I got our two back bolt holes loose and I'll just show you how, uh, how this works here. So those are broke loose and I'm gonna raise the winch up and you'll see how it pivots down. See, the back portion is all loose there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and lower the back down, and I'm going to put my uh, little dolly here under the front there for when I redo, uh, take out those front two bolts, and then um, that way it won't just drop down on me there. So uh, I'll go ahead and slide the dolly under there and get those loose and show you how it looks. One thing I forgot to mention here is uh, we're still using the 9 16ths, the same as we did for the track tensioner, but um, on this front bolt, there's actually, it's a bolt and a, a nut with a washer, the nut and the washer on the back side. So you're going to use your open end 916s on the back side and then your socket on the front side just to get that loose. So anyways, I've got all four of our, our bolts out and now our track is free. So now what I'm going to do is uh, lift this bad boy up a little bit just to get the body out of the way, the tunnel out of the way. And uh, now it's time to wrestle this bad boy out. So um, I will uh, catch up when I get that out. Just a little tip here before I get this going here. Um, I took the, the the skid and I slid it forward a little bit. Um, and then I took a bungee and actually put it around the track up here to raise it up. That way it's just one less thing to get hung up on bogey wheels as it's coming out. So now what I'm gonna do is just kinda inch it out. Gotta get it up over all the humps and I'm gonna bring it out this way so I don't pinch this cord at all here. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll show you once it's out. All right, there we go. Uh, we wrestled that track out. Like I said, just take your time. Um, you're gonna, it's gonna be a little frustrating. It will get hung up on the uh, the lugs in, on the inside of the track there with the bogey wheels and everything else. So just take your time, work it out, look for where you're getting hung up on. Don't lose your temper. All right. So another thing, um, it's good to take a look at here is your mounting holes um, to make sure those bad boys aren't egged out. Okay, it's just aluminum. It's part of the tunnel. I checked all four of mine. They all look good and round still, so that's good. Um, before I get going here on my bogey wheels, I'm going to go ahead and loosen the tension on my torsion bars here. So I have these set to the stiffest setting um, because I'm up over 200 pounds with all my riding gear on and everything and with this uh, long track. So um, you need a 13 16 socket and rotate it at one click. You know you're on the, the lightest tension because you got the least amount of uh, material showing here. Okay, so I'm gonna do that same thing on both sides. Go over here to the other side, do the same thing. Um, oh, actually, I already did that one, so there we go. We're good. A um, couple more things to point out once this track comes out. You've got some um, brass body mounts here. You want to just make sure you don't lose those. There's one on this side, and there is one that goes on the other side for each side of these top ones here. So just uh, keep track of those, make sure you don't lose them. You also wanna to check to make sure that those are in good shape yet, not loose. Mine look pretty good. So we're just gonna keep those as they are. Um, put him back up here. And uh, now we'll get to work on our bogey wheels here right off the bat. So we've got nut on this side, we've got a bolt head on the, oh, can't see it there, bolt head on this side down here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and that looks like it's a 9 16th, same as everything else, but uh, I'll let you know in a moment here, but we're going to go ahead and get that loose. So just put a wrench on either side and loosen it up and that should slide right out and just be careful because this is under tension here, so don't let that come up and pop you. So just be careful. All right, I'll show you once we get that out. All right, I got my nut off from right here. Um, that doesn't want to slide out on its own because it's under tension, so I'm taking a punch. I'm going to go ahead and tap that in. So now, this is a greased axle, so if you do a good job of keeping up with your greasing, this should go through pretty quickly. But um, here's what I'm going to do is just drive through, and again, watch out for that washer here. Keep track of your hardware. Watch, this guy's going to want to pop out off on me pretty quick here, so just 
Be careful. Here it comes. A little bit more. There we go. Pop down. All right, keep track of your spacers and your washers in there, and then um, just continue on through until you get that all the way through. All right, now I'm going to go through and just kind of pull on the other side and get that out of there, but you don't need to see that. So we'll catch up when we're done. All right, I got my axle out here. Um, I pulled out pretty easy the other side. So what I'm going to do before I stick it back in there is put it on my wire wheel and just clean that up. Make sure it slides in nice and easy and grease it up good. Um, so now, I got this out. Now in order to get these bogey wheels out, I have a couple directions I can go. I can go backwards or I can go forwards. To go backwards, I'm going to have to um, take some of this stuff off. Uh, to go forwards, I'm going to have to take this off. But upon further examination, there I don't know if you can see that here, but there's a bushing down here. And that bushing is wore through, wore right off. So I'm gonna have to replace that bushing. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, take this off. So in order to do that, I have to take off this bogey wheel and that one on that side. Um, then I can take this bar right here out and get my bogey or my uh, bushing out. Then I can slide these wheels back here. Um, I'm probably We'll have to see. It might have enough pivot room, but I might have to take out these bolts, here, this bolt here, too, to free up that shock. But um, we'll see. So I'm going to go ahead and get these bogey wheels off. Those are just held on again by, here we go, 9 16 here, and then a 9 16 inch nut on the back. So do that on both sides. Same thing down here, 9 16 9 16 um, And we'll get those freed up, and we'll show you how that looks once it's done. All right, guys, we've got progress here. Okay, so I took out our shaft uh, that the uh, spring rode on. Um, I also unbolted the that spring from the top here. There wasn't much play in there once you have this up. It um, wasn't under much tension, but <clears throat> I took that out just to make it easier on myself. And I was able to pop that axle back. Um, I did have to remove the one bogey wheel on this side, the mount for the bogey wheel, which you see here, because um, that was getting in the way of popping that back. So I popped that out. Um, yeah, that bushing was completely roached in there, so uh, we're going to have to go ahead and go and see if we can get a new one of those, um, which we should be able to get in town. Um, then I went ahead and I popped our um, axle back this way for our bogey wheels that we're trying to replace, and I was able to pop the one set out. So something to note, um, there's that spacer there that rides in the middle, and there's a washer on either side of that... Um, bogey wheel. So there's one on one on this side of the bogey wheel and then one that runs between the spacer and the bogey wheel itself. So um, here we go. I got this one out. Um, note the orientation. So you've got a, call it like a bigger plug and a smaller plug. The bigger plug is on the inside. Okay, same as the one that's over there. Pictures help when you're doing this or taking videos like this so you can see uh, where you've made your mistakes. So we're going to go ahead and take this up to the workbench and show you how to pop that bearing out. So just give me a moment. All right, we're on the bench here. Um, you can see there's a plastic plug on each side. Hard to get in there unless you've got tiny fingers, but I usually just go in here with a pick. Pull the one side out, and you should be able to press through and pop the other side out. And here's your bearing. Um, so what we need to do is take our um, bearing clip, spring clip, tool and pop that out so let me go ahead and grab that um, I'll show you once we got that set all right we got our tool here so um, we just go ahead if you don't have one of these you should get one they're great they come in different configurations like with removable tools some are on an angle some are straight up and down um, I'm gonna go ahead and use the straight up and down but you just uh, basically put it in the two holes inside of that clip and you squeeze and it's still kind of a trick to get it out but um, if you can get it squeezed like so, you can usually take a pick and get under there. Whoop. Yep, she's a struggle. Get in there. Come on. There we go. It's hard to work offset from the camera here, of course. If I didn't have the camera on, I'm sure I'd get it in one try. There we go. Got her out. 
pick underneath it, boom. Watch out so it doesn't hit you in the face. It was close. All right, so now we can go ahead and turn this over and just drive that bearing out. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a, get a uh, punch and drive that bearing out. You don't need to see that, but I'll show you once I get it out. All right, so I got it out. So what I wound up doing is taking it, uh, putting it upside down, and setting it on top of my vise there and had the hole open, or the vise open large enough so that it would span the gap there. And then I took this socket because it is slightly larger than the opening in that bearing. And I just whacked down a couple times and it popped out. So not re really the right way to do it. You should have a press, but um, you gotta work with what you got. I don't got a press, so what I got is a socket and a vise. So it works just fine for me. So now we're gonna repeat that um, in reverse order. I don't need to put it back on the vise, but I can take, first of all, I'm gonna go, go through and clean all that up, but I'm gonna take my new bearing and I'm gonna pop it back in there. So um, side note, um, I ordered a bunch of these bearings a few years ago. I think it came in a 10 pack for pretty cheap. I don't have the part number right here, but I will um, put it down in the description. But yeah, I ordered a 10 pack, pretty cheap. That way I can replace um, bogey wheels as needed. Usually, usually you gotta replace one or two each year. So that's about how that sort of thing works. So anyway, so I'll get this cleaned up. I'll take my um, bearing, set it in there as straight as I can. And when you pound on this, you want to pound, actually you want to try to pound on this outer ring if you can. So I do have a bearing race tool I'll show you as I'm doing that. So just give me a minute to get it cleaned up. All right, I've got everything here. Get you centered there. Get you every, everything cleaned up here. Um, I've got the bearing set in there as centered as I can. Um, here's that tool I was talking about. So it's uh, made by Maddox. I got it at Harbor Freight. Um, I've used it in one of my other videos too, but um, basically it's got various sizes of uh, disc that you line up with the outer edge of your bearing, um, make it, it should be like slightly smaller. That way you can pound in on this outside surface and not worry about dinging up the bearing here. So here's the one that I chose. Um, you can see it lines up with the outside there. So now all I have to do is give it a couple taps. My bearing is seated home. Now I can go ahead and put my ring in there. Just give it a couple of taps. There, yeah, that's solid. Now I can go ahead and put my snap ring back in there. Use my tool the same way I did before. Get that. Whoop. Of course, the camera's watching. It's not going to work right. There. So now it's down in there. Make sure that that is snapped in place all the way around. See, like right here, it's not quite in place. So we'll go ahead and um, make sure that it's seated properly. There. Now it's seated where it needs to be. So now that's back in place. Now we can go ahead and put our small plug back in and our big plug back in and make sure that spins freely. Looks good. Now we can go ahead and we'll do the other bogey wheel and then we'll get everything back installed there. So I'll, uh, I won't show you the other bogey wheel. It's going to be the exact same process, but I'll show you the install. All right. We've got our bearings back in our bogies. So now what we're gonna go ahead and do is reinstall this part at least. So my long shaft, I went and I cleaned it up on the wire wheel. Looks a lot better than it did before, it's a lot less gooey. Um, all right, so down here we've got, again, we've got spacer, washer, bogey, spacer. Over here we've got spacer, bogey, washer, and then we'll work on getting that spacer in here momentarily. Um, so it's gonna be a little bit of a wrestling match. So it helps here, I've got this propped up to take the pressure off there. Um, so that will help us out there. So now I can push my shaft through. Whoop, too much. Yep, it's gonna be a wrestle match on camera, I know it. All right, here we go. Get our washer on there. We'll get our spacer started. Let's push our shaft through. There we go, our shaft is about where it's gonna be. And now we push down, get it between the rails down there. There we go. All right, so our hole is back here. So we're gonna have to go ahead and pivot that back. Okay, like that. So we've got our belt lined up, we're close. Let's see about this side. That side is just about there, okay. So now we've got our Got our shaft. Oh, first thing though, we gotta get our uh, torque converter back on. Put that fell down. The 
push it back up. All right, so torsion bar. There is, it's hard to see in here, but there is something that says up. That goes up. Okay, so when we get it on this side, that goes up. So, let's slip this through. This is where the fun part begins. The real wrestle match. Okay, I actually want to get this washer on here. All right, so now slip it through. Start slipping it through the torsion bar. Like so. Got to flex the torsion bar up. Get it in alignment with our hole. Oh. Alright, how close are we there? I think we're close now. We'll start driving it in. There we go. Going through nicely. Now, when we get to the other side, we want to be careful. We don't want to get it. Okay, you want this there on us. So, um, let's get our parts ready over here. Torsion bar up. Get this installed. Okay. Now let's see if we can get this poking through. Pivot slightly. There we go. Alright, she's coming through. Now, they're sticking out a little bit. Let's get her torsion bar in place. Okay. Now we should be able to drive it home. Boom, we're through. Let's get our washer. We got our washer backwards, yep. Washer that way. Our nut on. And we can go ahead and tighten that down as soon as I can find my socket wrench. So now we're going to go ahead and grease that zerk right there. Make sure we got grease going all through that system, but that's ready to go. Now, next step, I'm going to have to run to town to see if I can find the other portion of our bushing here that uh, that's all roached up. So I'm going to go ahead and run to town, see if I can find that, and then I'll bring you back when we're, when we're ready to go. So uh, stay tuned. All right, I'm back from town. As you can see, I found a bushing. I'm pretty sure it's the same bushing I bought last time. Now, I didn't get the exact Arctic Cat bushing that's supposed to go in this uh, in this skid because that they want like thirty dollars for that bushing plus the shipping plus it'll take a week to get here. So this is the same thing I did last time I tore this apart when I actually extended it to one thirty six. It lasted me three years, so I think I'm better off. But anyways, um, I'm gonna go ahead and start working on getting this put back together. But yeah, that bushing fits perfectly inside the hole on the spring mount here. And uh, the shaft slides in there perfectly. It's a uh, 7 8 inch ID on that bushing. I forget what the OD is. I think it's a 1 inch. So it's just a eighth inch bushing that slides in there and then fits perfectly. Worked good for me for three years. No problem. So uh, that's what we're doing. So um, I'll uh, get back with you as I'm putting this stuff back together. All right. I've got my bushing in place. I've got my spacers in place. Um, and I actually got my shaft in pretty easily there. I was going to show you on camera, but it popped in. So I'm not going to take it back out. So now we're just going to go ahead and tap our shaft the rest of the way through. Let's see what we're looking like here. We're off just a hair on this side. So I'm just going to take our wrench here and pop it over. That might have been too much. And we'll see. That's real close. All right, that ought to be it. There we go, we're through. Now we will take our washer. Goes this way. And then our nut. We'll go ahead and we'll tighten this one back down. We're getting there, folks. All right, where is my wrench? Impact. Make sure that's 
good and snug. Give it freely, that's good. Excellent, okay. So now, we gotta get our um, spring back where it is. So we gotta put our little cap back on there. Whoops, throwing stuff back. All right, there we go. So, I always like to put a little bit of grease on these surfaces that are um, metal on metal too, just to help them, you know, not get stuck rusted together since these do see water, you know, from being in the snow and ice and whatnot. So, whoop, get our, we're gonna have to compress our, our shock a little bit here, but it's usually not too, too bad. Okay, almost in place. Let's get our, yeah, a little bit more. At least you know our shock's good, right? I'm gonna do, let's see, I'll try to take my punch and see if I can. Get that centered a little bit better. There. Okay, we got it. All right, now it's time to get our nut back on. Tighten that bad boy back down. Okay. Okay. That's snug. Nice. All right. Um, gotta get our bogey wheels back on now, and then we are uh, basically done with this portion of it. So, nice thing about this is all 916s down here. So, no changing of wrenches, no changing of sockets. One wrench in your one wrench and one socket, and you're good to go. Sure, I didn't get my hole lined up on that one. Lesson learned there, folks. Get your hole lined up first. How far off are we? Uh, just. your spacer Oops. make sure you don't drop your spacer but make sure your uh, spacer for your bogeys centered in there like it was before slide her in there we go uh, before you do that snug down your nut on the back side I have to use the regular wrench there Good. Let's see. That 
movie's good. And the last one. This one should be lined up since we didn't uh, have to take this one off. There we go. Perfect. Whoop. Okay. back together here. Um, I did take all my preload out of here, so I'm going to have to turn that back up. I had it at, at about uh, 10 turns, but um, I'll get it at 10 turns, and then uh, once we get it back in there and it's under tension, we'll be able to keep it snugged up there. But uh, let me get you off the tripod and show you a couple things down here. Yeah, so I didn't show you this uh, um, on camera, but I checked out this shock um, just for signs uh, that it's blown out and everything looked good. So things you're looking for is like on the shaft here, look for oily buildup um, around here, up here, uh, that type of thing. But both of these look like they're in good shape. And then since you got this apart, just look for other like loose, loose joints. You know, there's a bushing in here. Make sure that's snug on both sides. Yep, they're both good. Um, you know, check out all your other bogeys. Make sure that they're not cracked and that they're in place. Check out your rear axle, all that sort of thing. And then um, it's not a bad idea to go through and just make sure, since this is an extension, make sure all my nuts and bolts are still tight on there. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then um, I'll bring you back when it is time to throw the skid back in. But um, that'll be tomorrow. It's hunting season here in Wisconsin, so it's about time to head out to the deer stand. So uh, I'll pick you back up tomorrow morning. All right, and we're back. No deer last night, so I uh, still got today for rifle. Uh, it was raining pretty good this morning, so I didn't see anything. But anyways, time to get that skid back in. So um, I'll set you up and I'll uh, let you watch me struggle because I know some people like to do that. So here we go. So um, what I'm going to try to do is get it in, get the front end on an angle first and then hop the back over. So that uh, usually that's how I got it out. So um, we'll see if I can get it in the same way. There you go. Not too bad. Now we'll see if we can get our uh, holes to line up here. So let's lower down. I'm going to pull the track back. I can see that already.
All right, we're back. So what I wound up doing was dropping it back down and taking out our front bolts over here and then um, getting the rear ones in because I was having an alignment issue with the, the springs and everything. So once I got the rear ones in, then I could control up and down with the back there. Um, I, I took my skis off that block because that seemed to help a little bit. And then I put um, one of the blocks underneath the front of the track there and I was able to finagle it and get those bolts back in. So now everything's tightened up. Um, our next course of action is going to be to get our track tension. So you can see I've got it up off the ground again. So what I'm going to do is show you how I tension my track here. So uh, one second, I'll put it on the tripod and I'll show you how we do it. All right, here we are. So again, um, I've got my track up off the ground and I've got my um, rear axle all the way in the shortened position. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is uh, take my 9 sixteenths. And I'm going to start tightening these. So I'm going to I'm going to crank on this until I see the wheel start to move, and then I'm going to count ten pumps. Go to the other side and do the same thing. That way, we're making the axle go back evenly rather than you know cocked. So we, we don't want to do all do it all at once. So here we go. Let's see if you can see that on film. Um, we'll give her a shot here. Okay, we're just starting to move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now go to the other side and do the same thing. Okay, this set is tight now, so we're gonna give her 10. One, two, three, four, whoops. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, come back to this side. I'm gonna give it five. One, two, three, four, five. Go to the other side, give it five. Come back here, five more. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And we're finally starting to see the tension come out of the sag in the track here. I'll give it five more each side and then I'll set you up differently so you can see the middle. One, two, three, four, five. Now we'll go ahead and set you up in the middle and we'll show you that. All right, we're set up in the middle here so you can see the tension being taken up. Now I've got my skid sitting just about level with the ground. Um, that way, once I get close to where I want to be, we can take some measurements. So there's nothing in the Articat book about a 136 inch track, obviously, since I converted this. So best I can find from online, we're saying from guys that have done this, they're saying two inches. And that's what I've been running um, since I put this in. You know, once I got all the stretch out, I've been running about two inches, and it's been fine. It has been ratcheting. It's felt smooth and fast. Um, doesn't seem restricted when I'm, uh, idle, you know, coasting to a stop. So I'm, I'm going with that, okay? So here we go. We'll keep on going. One, two, three, four, five. 
One, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> Okay, let's take a measurement and see where we're at. Because we're getting real close to where we were uh, previous to me taking everything apart. So, looks like I'm right about two inches right there. Maybe a little bit more, so we might take a little bit more out. Three quick pumps there. That looks pretty darn good. I'm gonna check the other side. Now, something to point out here too. If you notice, I was measuring right by this bolt. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing, measure from the exact same spot on the other side. That way I'm close. Pretty darn close. All right, so one thing to do also to make sure that you're close is to take a measurement from the mating surface here on your uh, your tightener block up to the edge of the, I'll go to the far edge of the bolt here just to see how far that bolt is sticking out. And that'll give you an indication whether you're, you know, one way or the other, or you're close here. So we'll go ahead and uh, take a measurement there. I'm at, three and a sixteenth. Take a measurement here and I'm right at three. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and let this, this side out just a hair. Three and a sixteenth. Three and a sixteenth. All right, so we're real close. So now we're going to go ahead and um, hold our ratchet on here. And where to put my ratchet? Back over here, I suppose. And tighten our stop our lock nut here. So we'll tighten him down by hand. Hold our ratchet on here, and then. Tighten him up until he is good and tight. Okay, make sure I'm still where I just was. Yep, three and a sixteenth. Go to the other side. Okay, now that's tight and our track should be pretty close to where it is, uh, where it needs to be. So what we're gonna do in a minute here is fire up the sled and rotate the track um, with it in the suspended position. But first, I need to put our uh, plug back, our quick connect back in for our dial adjust shock. So I'll show you a very specific step you need to do there. So just uh, hang with me. 
All right, as you can see, we're on the clutch side of the engine here. I went ahead and I removed my belt and removed my secondary just to make this task a little bit easier. But down here is where that quick connect is for my um, Dialogist shock. So we've got our female end and we've got our male end. So per my shock builder, um, if you just stick that, that male end the female end, you run the risk of shooting an air bubble up inside the, uh, the line there. Um, so you don't want to do that. So he recommends taking some shock oil. So what I have here is Articat shock oil and filling up that female end and then keeping it as vertical as possible, go down inside and stick the male end back in there. So I'm going to hold my clip connect open. There. Now we got her together. So we'll go ahead and we'll wipe up that oil a little bit there, but that's how that goes. So, um, most of you already know this, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my secondary back on, put my belt back on, but then we're gonna go ahead and fire this thing up and spin that track and we'll see if we're running true. So uh, stick with me and I'll set you back up on the back end. All right, we're back. All right, so what we're gonna be doing here is, like I mentioned, we're gonna fire up the sled, rotate the track, just let it run and let it come to an idle stop. And then we're gonna take a measurement. Um, I like to go from the inside of the lug to the outside of your uh, your hyfax here, just to see um, if the what the distance is here. Then check the other side. And that'll tell you if your track is running true or not. So let's go ahead and fire this bad boy up and rotate the track for a second, and then uh, we'll see where we're at. Looks like I'm running about three-eighths of an inch there. And about three-eighths of an inch there. Just double-check my measurements. say we're good so now there again if you notice that your measurements were off a little bit um, one way or the other that means your track is a little bit twisted and then you want to go ahead and adjust your uh, your rear to either lengthen or low and low uh, lengthen or shorten one side um, and then run the test again so uh, one more thing to point out I didn't mention before is once you reassemble these front bolts there is a grease zerk on there so go ahead and pump that full of grease but yeah, this sled should be about ready to run. So hey, thanks for sticking with me. Hopefully this helps somebody out, and I uh, look forward to making one for you next time. Take care.